Please welcome Dr. Stuart Marmerstein. Hello, everybody. Hello. I want you to remember one thing if you remember nothing else today, which is that everything starts with the mother. My own mother really wanted me to be a doctor. I grew up in a Jewish home, and she had ambitions for me. And from the time I was little, she knew that I was going to grow up to be some kind of a doctor. Now, all this preparation included getting three National Science Foundation grants before I ever graduated from high school, getting almost perfect scores on my SATs and achievement tests, and then getting accepted into both medical school and college before I graduated. And I did all of that and started on that program. Once I got into it, though, there was an inner voice that was telling me this was not my path. This was not really my destiny. This is not where I belonged. I had gotten onto the wrong train and I needed to get off. I knew I wanted to be involved with healing, but I also knew that it wasn't going to be through drugs and surgery. Now, the funny thing is that my mother didn't realize that I already was a doctor. Not only that, but all of you are also doctors. The tremendous healing power that we have inside of us has a potential that you can only try to imagine. Now, the first place I came into contact with this was when I heard a chiropractor guest lecture somewhere, and I decided I'm going to go to chiropractic college. I called the dean on the phone. He looked at my grades. He looked at my background. He said, come on down. So I started chiropractic college, and this was the philosophy behind chiropractic originally, which is that the body heals itself, and if you get the blocks out of the way by adjusting the spine, everything's going to be fine. I graduated, became a great symptom reliever. But I found that people's corrections or adjustments were not lasting and that problems were not going away, including problems in my own body. Even though I was getting adjusted regularly and trading with a colleague in New York City where I was practicing at the time, I still had low back pain. I still had a TMJ problem that I had incurred in chiropractic college. I also had to take thyroid medication and I still had allergies. But other than that, chiropractic was working just fine for me. <laughs> Later on, I came across a very brilliant man, an osteopath from Ireland. His name is Robert Boyd. And I would put Robert Boyd in the same category with Einstein and da Vinci and other geniuses. He discovered a way to really take the emergency break off of our natural healing power. There was something that was right about chiropractic, but there was something incomplete about it. Chiropractic basically deals with the 20% of the nervous system below the neck, and there's this missing 80% above the neck called the head that we have to look into. Now, I'd like you all to do uh, an exercise with me a minute, but listen before you do it. What I'd like you to do is put your fingers in your ears. Don't do it yet. And when you put your fingers in your ears, I want you to See if you can tell if, whether the hole in one side is higher or lower than the other, or one is further forward or backward. OK, you can try that now, and then take your fingers out after you feel that. Wanted to make sure you didn't miss the instructions. OK, were you able to tell a difference? A lot of you were. Most of you? Now, what I'd like you to do next is look at your neighbor and take a look at their eyes. Now, what I want you to look for is I want you to look for an eye that's a little more closed or a little more open, one that's lower in the head or higher, one that's, one that's set back a little bit or a little more forward. Can you see that, everybody? OK. All right, now, let me show you what this actually is. OK, I've got a model of a skull here. He doesn't bite because he's made out of plastic, but this is, this is molded from real bone, so it's anatomically accurate. Now, if you take a close look at this, what you'll see is that one eye socket is actually a different size from the other one. One cheekbone is further forward, and the stripe that goes down the middle of the highway isn't going down the middle at all. It's off to one side. There are all kinds of bulges and dents, and it looks more like it came out of a melon patch than out of the Ford factory. Now, so this skull is very light. It weighs ounces. 
But a real skull, your real head, when it's alive, weighs between 11 and 16 pounds like a bowling ball. So if this is not sitting on top of the head properly, it's going to tend to shift off to the side, and when it does, it's going to pull the top vertebrae with it and create all kinds of problems. Now, there's another thing people don't know about the skull, which is that the skull moves. What's supposed to happen with the skull is there's supposed to be expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction throughout life. This motion has been called the involuntary movement or the primary respiratory mechanism, and it has a lot to do with whether or not our healing force is going to get around and get the job done. Now, if our head is twisted and warped, then when this expansion and contraction is trying to take place, it's inhibited, and we don't have all the healing power available to us that we should. That's what biocranial can change. Now, what can happen Oh, why did, why did we get this idea to begin with that the skull bones don't move? How many of you have ever heard of Gray's Anatomy? Not this, the Sunday night television show, but the, but the book. Well, Henry Gray was a British anatomist, and he got the idea by looking at dead skulls that they were more like one fused football helmet and that there was no possibility of movement. In a living person, there's cartilage between these different plates of the skull. It's alive and these bones are in motion. However, when we die, that cartilage turns to something like glue, and then it looks like everything is fused. And because Henry Gray was the great man, what happened is all the other doctors later on said, the skull bones don't move. Henry Gray said so. They finally forgot where it came from and said, no, skull bones don't move. Now, if you were to have me check out your ears or eyes after I worked on you, you would know that the skull bones actually do move because we'd see these holes in the ears lining up We'd see the eyes opening up, becoming more level, and within a few visits, a lot of health problems going away. What can happen when this health potential that we have, this healing potential, is totally unleashed? I'll give you an example. A patient came to see me named Jackie. Her husband brought her in to see me, and she had been suffering for nine years with extreme migraines and fibromyalgia. She had been to multiple neurosurgeons, neurologists, pain management specialists who gave her all kinds of medications. They were doing experimental treatments on her where they would insert electrodes and they'd have to immobilize her so she wouldn't move and paralyze herself. And at the time I met her, she was already on the highest dosage of morphine patch that they normally reserve for terminal cancer patients. After I worked with her two times with Dr. Boyd's biocranial system, she was back in the gym, off all medication, and leading a normal life. She comes to see me every few months now, and she's happy, healthy, and she and her husband Mark are spreading the news all over the Internet. Now, there's another thing about working on the head that a lot of people don't realize. Yes, it is good for any problems going on in the head. It's very easy to think about, let me get my friend up here again, if the head bones don't line up right, where would somebody get a TMJ problem from? Well, this lower jaw or mandible is not going to be seated right between the two temporal bones if they're not lined up with each other. So it's going to be like sitting at a wobbly table in a restaurant. The sinus passages inside the head are going to be closed. So with the sinus passages closed, you can't get any drainage. If you don't get drainage, the fluid builds up and the person gets sinus trouble. Remember I told you everything starts with the mother? Let's talk about a different mother now called the Dura Mater, which is Latin for tough mother. Not like a gang member, but <laughs> it's, it's like mother of pearl material. Now this tough mother actually lines the brain. It goes between the brain and the inside surface of the skull, and it goes deep between the cerebral hemispheres. It physically anchors into the bones of the skull and if you wanted to get it out of there, you'd need a hammer and a chisel. It is tough. But it doesn't just stay inside the skull. It wraps around the pituitary gland right here, and that's why the uh, hormone balance can be affected. This can include changing things like my thyroid problem that went away, diabetes, 
menstrual problems, menopausal problems. It also comes out of here, it attaches to the spine, the neck and the lower back, and it covers all the nerve roots. So by doing this one procedure, it's possible to change all of human physiology and make a huge difference. So I hope you'll all get your head, heads examined. <laughs> and if you're a mother, get your child's head examined because everything in your baby's life will be determined by what goes on inside this head. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you.